Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome back to my channel. So today I have another Middle Eastern haul for you guys. It's been a minute since I did one and I told you I had something in the work. I have this haul that I'm going to be talking about. I've got a few other hauls um, that I'm working on um, that I'll be posting in the next week or so. It's quite a few fragrances, um, lots of new Middle Eastern fragrances that are new to my collection at least, that I want to talk about. But I have eight fragrances here today, all Middle Eastern brands that we're going to be getting into. Um, and I have some serious thoughts on a lot of these, honestly, that I want to sort of share with you because I feel like some of these thoughts aren't really being talked about enough. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I've got my conspiracy theories. Um, and yeah, that's what we're going to be getting into today. If you like these videos, definitely look in the description box down below. Y'all always know I will link the fragrances and where to find them down below in my description box. Follow me on Instagram. I'm on Goddess on Neptune on Instagram. Same on threads. And yeah, let's get started with the first fragrance that has the whole internet and YouTube on a chokehold right now. And you probably know what this one is just by the thumbnail and everyone and their mama be talking about this one. And yeah, I've got some thoughts on this fragrance. It is from Tuskeen or the flanker to Tuskeen. And this one is called Caramel Cascade. There are three in the Tuskeen line, the original Tuskeen, Tuskeen Marina, which is one that I've talked about on here. It's a really nice aquatic floral that sort of grew on me with time. And now this is the latest one to the collection of the Tuskeen series. And this one is called Caramel Cascade. The bottle looks like this. There we go. It's a really beautiful caramel looking bottle with the star note of this one being caramel as well. Now, everyone is saying that this is a dupe for Bianco Latte. I have no idea what Bianco Latte smells like. I have heard of the fragrance. I know people rave about it. It's not one that I care to get in my collection, nor was I drawn to it, if I'm honest. I mean, if you love that fragrance, um, that's super cool. I've, I haven't smelled it. I can't compare the two, but I can tell you my thoughts on this one in particular. So I don't know if it smells like Bianco Latte, if you want my opinion on that similarity. There are other YouTube channels that are talking about it. I'm just going to be talking about my thoughts on this one in particular because, like I said, right now, it's got the internet on a chokehold and I don't know what's going on. I am scared. Everybody is raving about it and they're like, go get this. This is the next best thing since sliced bread and I just needed to know if it really was the next best thing to slice bread and yeah one thing I will say I picked this up right and immediately started seeing hype around this fragrance everyone was like oh my god yes slay queen mm, you know so I really wanted to see if the hype was real but one way that I can sort of gauge and I know this is a weird way and let me know if any of you do this if there is hype behind a fragrance or not Checking Mercari to see if there are bottles of this for sale almost immediately after the hype goes up is a surefire way of letting me know if it's worth investing in or not. And sure enough, over the last few dates, I've been seeing a lot of people post their bottles like um, for sale on Mercari and them selling quickly. Um, so that usually tells me that there might be something up with the scent if people are selling their bottles right away. And I will say I can see why people are. Um, not that this is a bad fragrance, but it's definitely weird. In the opening, you've got notes of caramel, milk, tonka bean, honey, vanilla, and white musk. And I don't know if I'm the only one that's talking about this. I haven't seen anyone else talk about it, but the opening sucks. When I spray this, the opening smells like caramel and mushrooms. I hate to use that description, but the musk and the honey... And this on my skin is reading mushrooms. You know, you get mushrooms and you open it. It's that sort of wet, dingy, earthy, sort of almost fishy smell. That's what I'm getting on my skin. I know that sounds weird and I haven't seen anybody talk about it, which weirds me out because I'm like, why is everyone afraid to mention that the opening seriously sucks? And that is why I think I'm seeing a lot of people selling their bottles. I really think this one's going to need time to macerate. I think if you just give it time, it will eventually develop into something a lot more beautiful. Um, I will say right off the bat, this is already pretty dang strong. I'm getting seven plus hours. Well, yeah, seven, eight hours on my skin. But damn, does the opening really mess with my nose. I am getting caramel and mushrooms and not like cooked mushrooms. Like I said, it is 
earthy. It is dingy. It's a little wet smelling. I could see like there's an animalic touch to this that really weirds me out. And on my skin, it's reading mushroom just forged from the forest and it's been sitting in a fridge for a couple days and now it's starting to have that slightly mushroomy fishy smell. Whew, man, it is, it's intense. If you can sit through the opening and get to the base, the base is where this really shines, you do get this very soft, slightly powdery, vanillic sort of caramel scent that really lingers. Once you get into the deeper dry down, I do notice a slight touch of spice that comes through. It's very, very slight. It's not anything like super pronounced, but I really like it when it gets to this point. It smells very dainty, girly, and romantic. It's just the opening of this fragrance that I think is going to challenge a lot of people. I don't know if that will change with time. It's relatively new in my collection, so it could change over time. Right now, those are my thoughts on this one, and I really don't know how to feel about it. I think it's a good fragrance. If you love caramel, you'll definitely love this, but the opening is definitely gonna turn heads. <laughs> I would have to spray this, let it sit, get through the smelling like a mushroom doused in caramel, and then the scent will really develop. There's a slight vanillic powdery tone that comes out through this fragrance that I think is quite nice, and honestly, yeah, I don't know what the hype is right now. I think it is beautiful. I think it's a good caramel fragrance. Do I think there's anything special about it? Not, not so much. Um, I do prefer the Marina over this one. This one will be suitable in cold weather. I can't really see anyone using this in the summertime, especially in the dead of summer, um, unless you go extremely light with the spray. You know, spray it in the air, walk through the mist. Maybe you could get away with that. But as it stands right now, Definitely a little on the mid side. I mean, I'm not crazy about it, but I do enjoy it. I just don't see the hype behind that one right now, especially with that opening being so, let's say, unique. It's a very unique opening. If you can get past the opening, yeah, even right now, I still get a hint of mushroom, but that initial burst is just like, whoa, girlfriend. It's not it. <laughs> The next one that I'm going to talk about, which was a hit, is one that I've been seeing a lot of people talk about lately, and that is Sensuous Night by Kadlaj. This one, I mean, the bottle in itself is just stunning. It's this, like, purple ombre bottle. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Focus for me, baby. It doesn't want to. There we go. It's got a gorgeous cap. The cap is heavy. It's got a little crystal on it. I think this is a really beautiful bottle, if I'm honest. It looks luxe, which I'm really enjoying. You've got notes of lemon, pineapple, grapefruit, rose, jasmine, violet, cedarwood, patchouli, amber, vanilla. This is really, really beautiful. This is giving me Victoria's Secret vibes, if I'm honest. I feel like I've smelt this before. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a Victoria's Secret fragrance that this is like trying to dupe. Maybe the Victoria's Secret Oud fragrance that comes in another purple bottle very kind of similar to this that has this sort of ombre effect I remember smelling that one a long time ago but it's been so long that I don't exactly remember what it smells like fully but it does give me a resemblance to Victoria's Secret style fragrances this is actually though really gorgeous this smells in the air so feminine so beautiful i do get this very clean hairspray vibe there's a very pronounced jasmine note in this that really pops out on skin but it's a clean sort of hairspray like jasmine um not to say that this is like the most clean fragrance out there in the deep dry down of this fragrance i do see a resemblance to darker fragrances like la trezor Nu uh, nuit not that it smells like 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 trezor nuit by any means but in the deep dry down the patchouli and the black currant mixing in with that rose really give me a slight resemblance like if treasure new wheat was a soda and it was just a regular soda this would be the diet version in the deep dry down it's really beautiful really airy really feminine really juicy and sparkling and as it dries down it gets a little bit darker and darker and darker but never loses that sparkling quality if that makes sense this is really, really beautiful, really feminine, really crowd-pleasing. I could see a lot of girls getting use of this. My guys out there watching, if you're looking for a fragrance for your girl, almost surefire hit that they're going to really enjoy this one. I would dare to say this would be an easy blind buy for anyone, especially if they're into Victoria's Secret style fragrances that almost give like a clean, maybe slightly shampoo-y vibe, but it's never really shampoo-y. 
Definitely a perfume, definitely a feminine girly girl perfume. The bottle is spectacular. This one is a monster for longevity. This one projects really beautifully. I went outside and it was a little windy um, and I was wearing this and goddamn, did I smell good. I could smell it in the air and I'm like, what the f am I smelling? I was like, is that me? Cause you know, I smelled it up close and I smell, it smells one way up close in the air, whole nother vibe whole nother vibe it is so freaking gorgeous in the air i don't know what kind of hoodoo voodoo magic they put in this mother trucker but it is beautiful and i'm here for it and i didn't think i would love this as much as i do but goddamn y'all i really like it i really like it sensuous night by kadlaj like get your hand on this one it's pretty affordable i will link where to get it down below but my god you guys get on it like this one sexy it is sexy girly chef's kiss and like i said it lasts forever that one lasted a good eight hours on my skin um and it lingers it lingers like a mofo the next one that i'm going to talk about is from Maison alhambra and this one is called chance tenderina the bottle looks like this if you can't tell what this is duping it is duping chanel's eau tendre um i hope i said that right probably not who knows you've got notes of bergamot grapefruit blossom peach jasmine rose iris uh white musk vetiver vanilla and patchouli and you guys this smells phenomenal i am a big fan of that fragrance um from chanel i've gifted it to my mom for christmas uh, the original one um uh, my aunt wears it like i've worn it i've really enjoyed the dossier version of it too if you're looking for a clean alternative version the dossier version, masterpiece, chef's kiss, phenomenal. Such a compliment getter. Um, but this one is really, really good too. I will say I did notice problems when I first received it. I bought this one and I remember the projection was almost non-existent. The longevity was almost non-existent. I've had this one for about a month now in my collection and I will say it is done a complete 180. This is a lot stronger. The resemblance to um, Otandra is so much better. Um, it's almost a one-to-one, -one, almost a one-to-one to, -one to Otandra, um, and I really like that. In the beginning, this one really wasn't doing it for me. This one had to sit and macerate for a while, um, and now I'm getting a good five to six hours out of this, where before it was maybe two. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to get this one. Um, this one is going to be a good one to let sit. Um, but it's really beautiful. If you don't know what this smells like, it is a sparkling, gorgeous rose fragrance. There is this citrusy burst and you get this beautiful, clean rose that is plush. It's pink smelling. The vetiver in this is so clean and lovely. And it reminds me of the vetiver that you find in Baldafique by, um, by Rado. If you're a fan of Baldafique, this has that same sort of vetiver vibe. That very clean, just soft, gorgeously plush vetiver that you don't typically see in a lot of fragrances. A lot of the time it adds a more masculine, earthy, woody touch. This is gorgeous. You guys, this smells feminine. It's romantic. It's clean. It's airy. This is the epitome of a girly girl scent. When you smell this, it really does smell pink. Men love this fragrance. I mean, if you want a man to just drool over you, I don't know what it is about this DNA, but men go cuckoo gaga. I think I paid $18 for this one. I paid around 30 something for the Tuscan one, and I paid like 25 for the Kadlaj Sensuous Night. Um, but this one was super affordable. It was like 18 bucks. And I mean, what a price difference compared to the original Chanso Tendre. If you want a really good dupe, but, you know, the only downside is that you're going to have to wait to wear it. This is a good one to get. Spray it a few times. Let it sit. Let it do its magic. And you will not be disappointed. But yes, you are going to have to let it sit because it is almost like ordering water when you first get it. At least that was my experience. But definitely a really beautiful one. And like, if you want to smell feminine, dainty, and gorgeous, and romantic this one perfect signature scent perfect like date night scent perfect all year round scent in my opinion this is just a really well done beautiful fragrance that i'm really happy to have in my collection because i really didn't want to go out and buy otandra again <laughs>
I just didn't. I don't know why. I feel like it's a very popular DNA and a lot of people smell like it. But for $18.99, girl, all day, every day, I'll keep buying that. Hell yeah. I'm not going to pay a hundred and something bucks. Y'all crack it. Unless that's your style. You know, I will never judge when it comes to buying the OG or like an alternative version. We all have different backgrounds. Not everyone can afford, you know, the high end niche stuff. I think having options like this is also really cool for people. Um, and you should never shame anyone into buying what they want to buy. I buy niche just as often as I buy Middle Eastern. Um, I've just been really enjoying talking about the Middle Eastern because there's some hidden gems out there that I just want you guys to know about. Um, and yeah, it's kind of fun. It's fun when it's affordable because you could buy a lot more. I mean, who doesn't love that? Like, come on. <laughs> anyway, the next one that I'm going to talk about was one that I was a little underwhelmed by. And by a little, I mean like a lot. Um, and this one is from Paris Corner and this one is called Twilight Shadow and this is from their Musk collection. The bottle is stunning. It's a sleigh. I love it. I love this weird like cap. It's weighted. It has some weight to it. It looks like some weird church wearing a Pope hat. Wow, this is stunning. I love it. And the juice, look at the juice. It's like milky pink. Like what the hell is going on here? This looks so strange to me, but I'm here for it. I don't know what the hell, like, but I like it. I like the bottle, and that's pretty much all I can say about it. Was I a fan of the fragrance? Not so much, but let me tell you why. This has notes of lily of the valley, rose um, in the top, and rose in the mid, and musk, and amber, and then more musk in the base. Like, this is going to be a rose and musk bomb. And when I tell you this is probably the powderiest fragrance in my collection, I am telling you this is the powderiest fragrance in my freaking collection. It is a powder bomb. And if you are not a fan of powder, steer clear away from this one. I find it challenging to wear, even though it's not a challenging fragrance, but it is so powdery, it borderlines baby powder, almost granny-esque vibes to me on my skin. Again, you might have a different experience. I have seen, I bought this based off of reviews. I was looking all over trying to find out what this smelled like and people were just raving. They're like, this is the best musky citrusy rose I've ever smelled in my life and da 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 da. And I was like, oh my god, like, slay, am I onto a hidden gem here? And then I bought it and I was like, the frick I'm not. The frick I'm not, you guys. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I spent $25 on this and I want my money back. But I'm not going to send it back because I'm not a quitter. No, honey. I let this sit and I waited to see if maybe I was going to enjoy it later on. And when I first got it, there was this sort of like burnt plasticky opening to me that has since left. But it took a minute for this to dissipate. Now I definitely get a bit more of that rose. It is musky. Lots of musk. This is heavy on the musk and the rose is kind of faint. You do get the slight sort of almost citrusy opening. I do get the cleanliness of the lily of the valley on the cap, but I don't get it once I spray the fragrance. I just get this heavy powdery musk and like powder bomb with a hint, a hint of rose. And honestly, there's no development to it. It just stays this very baby powdery, slightly rosy musk the entirety of the wear. There's no development to it. Pretty much what you spray is what you're going to get. Um, and it stays that way the entire time. Longevity on this is pretty good. Um, it's about six to seven hours or so. Um, way longer on clothes. It does create this bubble of powder around you. And if that's something that you're into and you love powdery fragrances, then girl, found you one. Um, but for me, no. Nah. I'm a pass. I'm gonna pass. I like the bottle. I like the juice. I think it's pretty. I think it's spectacular looking. It looks expensive as hell. Feels expensive. Nice weight to it and everything. But I don't. I don't know if I'm in my grandma era yet, you guys. Like, I feel old sometimes. Um, and maybe on those days I might reach for it. I reach for that. <laughs> I reach for that fragrance a lot, like going to bed. 
Um, and I've been told a few times that like, I've worn it like if I use like baby powder or I've used like a wet wipe or something because it does sort of give that sort of effect. Um, so I wasn't too happy about it because then I felt insecure and I was like, I'm walking around smelling like a clean baby's bottom and I don't know how to feel about that. Um, so yeah, the trauma has left me from like putting that fragrance on again. I don't know, maybe one of you is going to like it. Maybe it's going to react differently on your skin. I'm just telling you my experience. I am triggered. I have PTSD. I don't like it, you guys. I really don't like it. But it's not so bad. I mean, if you like powder, you're probably going to really love that. Take my word as a grain of salt. Everyone is different. We all pick up different notes. Maybe other people are picking up things that my nose isn't picking up. But I'm telling you, powder. Baby powder. Baby wipes. That's my review. That's all I have to say. Now, the next one that I'm going to talk about ooh, is one that I am kind of like super in love with. I'm not going to lie. Like this one kind of shook me and I wasn't expecting to love it so much. And this one is from Paris Corner. Um, and this one is called Forbidden Sugar. And if you don't know what it is duping, I'm going to tell you it is supposed to be duping uh, Frank Bouclet's Sugar. Just from the bottle aesthetics, it is definitely a dupe of that bottle. It is the same. Although I will say I prefer the packaging of this one over Frank Bouclet's Sugar because not gonna lie, it kind of gives me like cheap vibes when I look at that packaging. And just the plaque alone on this makes a huge difference in my opinion as far as like the aesthetic goes. Um, needless to say, I've never tried sugar. I can't compare the two and tell you that, oh, it's an exact dupe. Oh no, it's not a dupe. I can just tell you what this one smells like, right? You have notes of marshmallow, honey, cases, coconut, bergamot, caramel, vanilla, jasmine, pear, peach, white musk, orange blossom, raspberry, violet, and my God, this is a gorgeous vanilla fragrance. I get a lot of fruit, especially in the opening. Oh my goodness, this is so intoxicating. So beautiful. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it this fragrance that much. I wanted to get it to review it. Um, but it really is a spectacular fragrance to my nose and to me. It is so pretty. I definitely get, oh, just such a fruity vibe off the cap. I'm getting this honey sort of peach sort of fruity vibe. It's got like a, a juiciness to it. It's so juicy smelling it off the cap and once you spray it and it starts to settle down on skin, you really get this sort of honeyed marshmallow effect. It's so pretty. I get the slight, almost like a coconut shaving sort of effect. Like you have a beautiful, delicate, fruity dessert and you have like caramel drizzling on it. Maybe some fluffy cream, like marshmallowy cream. And you have these coconut shavings on it. It almost gives me like a tropically dessert while enjoying it sitting in a tropical garden full of flowers, primarily like these purple smelling flowers, like violets, which there is violet in this as well. Definitely get that floral note. This is spectacular. It smells complex while not being overtly complex. Well, no, I won't say that. It is a very complex fragrance in my opinion. This has depth. It has character. This is nuclear on skin and even longer on clothes. This on me lasted for freaking ever. I got A plus hours. I love this sort of like fruity, almost like, I don't know how to describe it, like a jelly dessert almost. Like you took a fruit, a milky fruit jello and put like, marshmallow whip and coconut on it and that's kind of like what I'm getting from this it's almost gourmand without going full gourmand but it definitely smells yeah that's the best way to describe it a milky fruity jello dessert with almost um whipped cream with some sort of like whipped cream and a little bit of like coconutty shavings mm, and you're enjoying it sitting in a garden that's what this fragrance smells like and it's such a vibe. I could see so many women being enamored by this fragrance. I'm honestly really happy with it. I like the simple packaging. I like the weighted cap. Like I think this is 
very expensive smelling and feeling and honestly i'm kind of here for it the only problem with my bottle is that it's been leaking since i got it um not a big fan of that if you're wondering why i keep putting it down it's because i keep like cleaning it off like it's super freaking annoying i just got a bad bottle like um but i'm like the only one that i've seen like talk about that problem so i think it was just a one-off I will reorder this again. It's that freaking good. And if you want to smell like a beautiful tropical dessert, um, this milky, fluffy, delicious. The honey on this never goes animalic on me, which I really like because sometimes honey can go a little bit cat pissy on some people. Um, this doesn't do that. If you want a really unique vanilla fragrance, look no further. Forbidden sugar. Get you a bottle of this. I think I paid like 38 bucks or something for that bottle. The next one that I'm going to talk about is one that was recommended from a subscriber. Thank you to Luna Blue for recommending this one. You are right. I did love it. This is Niche Royal Rouge. And if you cannot tell, and this is from Maison Alhambra, if you cannot tell what this is duping, it is a dupe of uh, Rouge Maliki by um, Armani from the Privé line. You've got bergamot, Bitter, orange, fruits, pepper, jasmine, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, rose, amber, patchouli, sandalwood, and vanilla. And you guys, this smells like a, almost like a more candied version of like Rouge Maliki or Malachite, but with like the sage, like not there. The aromatic components of the sage aren't here. And this just smells sweeter. And I'm kind of here for it. Like, I really like this. It's a very springy and summery. And yes, it gives me like... A very natural smelling like Mugler um, alien vibe. It smells like that vibe but it smells like more natural. There's a slight greenness to this fragrance. It's floral, it's tropically, it's light but also has, um, it also pushes forward and it's not like a light like oh it's gonna dissipate quickly. It's light as in it smells airy but it's long lasting this lasts forever on me and it's only getting better the longer it sits i really enjoy this heavy glass bottle the red back the the cap is really light and plasticky but i don't really care this smells expensive it smells so expensive so sweet so nice i get the sort of white and yellow floral tropical vibe i'm excited to wear this in summer on me right now this is giving like seven to eight hours plus lasts forever on clothes i'm really happy to have this in my collection y'all I can't say enough good things. Thank you, Luna Blue, for recommending this. This is stellar. Really enjoy this one. And yeah, if you're a fan of those two scent profiles, um, Alien from Mugler and Rouge Maliki from um, Armani Privé, then do yourself a favor and get this because it is like those two had a baby. It would be this one. Um, and it's really, really beautiful. I really like it. I love this sort of natural floral smell that it has. And if you know me, you know I'm a floral girl. I love a good floral fragrance, especially when they smell natural. I love smelling like an inferior, like an inferior goddess, just walking around smelling like a flower. I think there's nothing more beautiful than smelling like a flower picked straight from a garden and just walking around living my best life. Oh my God. Oh my God gorgeous i recommend it you guys get your nose on that one the next one that i'm going to talk about is from the emir um line of um fragrances from paris corner this one is emir um unique portrait this one is a dupe of frederick mall's portrait of a lady which is a beautiful um rosy patchouli fragrance with incense you've got rose clove raspberry, black currant, cinnamon, patchouli, incense, sandalwood, musk, benzoin, and amber. And you guys, this is so similar to Portrait of a Lady. I haven't owned Portrait of a Lady in a while. I had the fragrance and I ended up donating it when I ended up um, getting divorced. Um, I had to let go of the majority of my collection, which was such a bummer. I ended up donating them to a animal shelter where I used to work. Um, they had a um, thrift store attached to the animal shelter so you could donate to the thrift store and all the proceeds from the thrift store went to benefiting the animals. Um, and I did work in animal service, um, the service care industry and did a lot of um, work 
providing medical services for people for a while that couldn't afford medical services for their pets and provided food for people who couldn't afford to feed their pets. And the organization I worked for, for although they fucked me over, ooh, uh, sorry, although they screwed me over um, and put me in a mental health hospital because they were not helping the fact that people were coming in um, threatening me. Um, so I have a, a little bone to pick with that place. And yeah, <laughs> I have a bone to pick with that place. Though they did me dirty, I do admire what they do for the animals in their care. Um, and I took a lot of pride in doing what I did when I worked there and it was amazing um, while well, it lasted because it wasn't an amazing job to work there. They treated their employees like shit and they let the community talk down to you and mistreat you and you just sort of had to take it um, and keep reminding yourself that you're doing it for the animals, which was a load of crap. In my opinion, I do believe in treating your animals good, but I do not believe that we should be treated worse than animals when you are working for a company that's trying to better the improvement of people's connection with their pets and keeping families together. It was strange. Anyway, back to the story. Or back to the uh, the point. This smells so much like what I remember portrait of a lady to smell like. This is a rose scent. And the best way to describe this scent that I have heard in the past is... Picture a old stone church that's like old and decayed um, and picture like a rose wilting in that church on a stone slab. You get this sort of cold like rock sort of feel from this. You definitely get the rose but it has this slightly vegetal smell to it. I can smell the stem. There's a greenness but it almost smells like it's wilting away. The raspberry aids in adding this sort of jammy effect to it so it's not fully like dead it still has a jammy quality but it's starting to wilt and it's sitting on a cold slab of stone and there's a slight dustiness and vegetal sort of feel coming off of the stem and you're getting like remnants of incense from this old church because you know incense were burned in here at one point but it's no longer a warm incense it's a cold incense um and it's cold feeling because of the coldness inside this decrepit old church there's something quite gothic about this, a little romantic, very unique. A unisex fragrance with a feminine lean. This is nuclear on skin and clothes. Um, I really enjoy having this in my collection. Um, it reminds me so much of Portrait of a Lady. I would say almost 98% clothes with slight minor differences from what I remember. I think this is a solid one. My girls out there that aren't scared of a rose patchouli combo scent, Definitely do yourself a favor and get this one. Long lasting projects. If you are a fan of that fragrance and cannot justify paying the price because the price point is redonk, this is an amazing alternative. I think I paid like 38 bucks for this or something. Definitely really good. The Amir line from Paris Corner, Chef's Kiss. Now, the last one that I'm going to talk about and probably my surprising favorite. Not from the bunch, but like one of my surprising favorites is La Tafa Fakar. This one is gorgeous. Now, this is supposed to be their take on the DNA of um, L'Anterdi by Givenchy. And yes, it does remind me of that. But in my opinion, this is better. You got fruits, lily, pomegranate, aldehydes, tuberose, jasmine, gardenia. You've got honeysuckle, ylang ylang, rose, peony, vanilla, white musk, and broxen and sandalwood. And you guys, this is a vibe. Oh, you get this sort of juicy, almost grape-like feel in the opening. But what's what I really enjoy is this sort of slightly clean clothes vibe. Picture like slightly clean clothes and then the most juicy, fruity, floral fragrance that is just so intoxicating. And men go nuts over this. And I think it's because men prefer a very clean smelling fragrances on women. This has a clean vibe, but it has complexity. It is juicy. It is floral as hell, and I really like it. I get these white florals. Oh my gosh, and there's just something really feminine and dainty and really, really pretty. When I first got this, I was not a fan. I was like, this is boring, this is whack. What the hell is everyone talking about? I did not see the hype. I let this sit for a couple weeks, and then I sprayed it again at a random, and that's when this clean note from the Ambroxan came out with the aldehydes. And it was the most cleanest smelling 
um, fragrance, I think I have in my collection, with this very like laundry smelling sort of feel without being like overtly a clean fragrance. It has complexity and the clean note in this is so addictive, it blew my mind. This lasts forever, eight plus hours, ultra feminine, super girly, super addictive. If you, if you wanna turn heads or have your man like salivating, this one, my God, do men go goo goo gaga. I have worn this and holy guacamole, they go nuts. Like, I'm like having to fight men off. I'm like, shasha, shasha, the muffin shop is closed. Ain't nothing here for you, homies. Good. This is good. My girls out there, if you're looking for a man, put this on. You will find a man. Just watch. Take my word for it. You ain't gonna be single no more. No more. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell's wrong with me today. I'm just on one. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I will link everything down below. Y'all know where to find me on Instagram, Goddess on Neptune, same on threads. And yeah, I've got another few hauls that I'm trying to break up and do separate videos on coming to you guys in the next few days. And another video on a fragrance oil brand that is new to my collection and new to me in general that I definitely have some thoughts on. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, you guys, I hope you found the video informative and I will talk to you in the next one. Hasta luego. Bye.